in this video I'm just going to be discussing a bit about how you can create custom tables in SPSS. So custom tables are useful primarily because they save you time. For instance, if you calculate descriptive statistics using the analyze descriptive frequency or descriptives method, you're going to get a table that's not really formatted for, let's say, APA style. And then you'll have to do some edits to that table to get the information you want, especially with the more variables you have, the more tedious it becomes. For instance, let's quickly do um, on this data set we have four variables variable A to variable D, two are continuous and two are categorical. Right? So let's just do a, a quick um, descriptives on A and B. Yeah, so that, that's the data you get, right? You get the mean, median, standard deviation, and so on. But generally, you would never format it in, in this manner, right? So you would have to do a, a bit of editing to get the table in the format that you actually need. So in order to just kind of get around that, SPSS allows us to create custom tables. So if we go to Analyze, Tables, and Custom Tables, this little box will open. So in this box we have basically an area in which we can design our tables according to the standards we want and the style we want to use and the variables that we want included in that table. And the other tabs are titles so you can pretty much give your a table a title, a caption and a corner note, certain test statistics that you can include in the table itself and there's options as well, such as how to uh, deal with blank data and how to use weighting and even the width of the columns you can customize. So without further ado, let us um, begin. So we're going to start off with just uh, two continuous variables, right? So we're going to highlight both of these and then drag them into the rows section. You could do columns as well, but I prefer to use rows. All right, so we start off with, and it automatically gives us the the summary statistic of the mean of these two scores. But that's, that's just the beginning of what we can do. There's so much more. So if we go on to, if we click both A and B, variable A and B, and then go down here to the define box and click summary statistics, we'll have a whole other option or a whole another array of options that we can choose from. For instance, we can either get either the column percentages, the layers, you can also have layers in the, the tables themselves, and then there's the med, medium, medium and mode. So I'm just going to click here for, for starters. And it's always nice to have the um, confidence limits, so we're going to include those include, click them over to the display box here. If we really wanted the standard error of the mean, we could have that. We could have the median and mode. And we're going to include these two just for, just for the sake of including them. We can also have the sum of the, especially for categorical variables, the number of uh, missing variables, the range of them, and so on. It includes uh, percentiles, table percent, subtable percent, and so on. There's there's a lot of options you can use. Let's just stick with this for now. So then we're going to click apply to section and here you can see all additional summary stats have been included. So in order to generate this table we would simply click OK. And there we go. It shows us the mean, the 95% lower confident limits and the upper confident limit for the mean, median and the mode for both variable A and variable B, variable B. And a table that is much, or that requires a lot less editing to, in order to include it in your work, or even no editing at all. I personally don't like to use the blue text, so I would change that to be black text and so on. Right, so that's, that's not all we can do, right? Often we have categorical variables, which we need to divide our continuous variables by to group them. So let's try to do that. Now go back to the data set quickly. 
So variable C is gender and variable D is group. So either group one or group two, male or female. Keeping it simple. So let's go back to our, our table. And let's say we want to have the score by gender, right? So we can either include it up here and then it will divide the table. It's basically create another version of the table for male and female. However, we don't need to have it here. We can also have it over here, either before or after A and B. So here we could have male and female on the on a row as opposed to having a different column it also makes the table a little bit shorter in width wise so let me we have can click ok and here we would get female score of both um, variable a and variable b and as well as the male score but let's we could also have multiple categorical variables in it so let's see over here, go to tables and custom tables. And let's say that we wanted to have gender in a column and as well as the overall group, right? So now the table is getting a bit big, but it's just for the example's sake. So we have group one and group two, and that is divided itself by males and females. Now obviously this is quite a large table and it's <laughs> there are probably better ways to go about creating it, but you get the idea, right? So in group one we would have well, for the groups we would have group one on the left, divided both by males and females for both of the ver the continuous variables, A and B. And then on the other side we'll have the same thing but for group two. So it's a very nice way to kind of customize the tables that you're making and it saves you a lot of effort later on the line. For instance, we could also, let's say it is too big. Let's, um, let's have it rather on the side here. Group one and group two, divided by males and females, giving the means and the confidence intervals and the medians and modes for the continuous variables of A and B. And there we go. And now it's very easy to add on to this table the the p values that we that we would calculate using um, independent samples or ANOVAs or, or whatever. We could easily edit these tables, create a new a new um, column, and then just add the p value in there without having to change it too much. So it's a very nice little. A nice little quirk that SPSS has built in for us and it does save a lot of time especially when you're working with a lot of variables particularly useful when you're working with categorical variables and you have to list the um, the percentages within the different categories I found it to be extremely helpful and yeah just a just a little video explaining this feature of SPSS this is using SPSS 25 but I I know it's available in at least the previous editions of 23 and 24. Not too sure what happens before then, but I would imagine it's been here for a while. And yep, yeah, if this video was useful, give me a like, maybe even subscribe to the channel. Yeah, etc, etc. The, the drill. You know the drill. And yep, yeah, thanks for watching.